Hey crew, if you've been tuning into the channel over the last month and a half or so, then you know by now that I have ordered a Dodge Demon 170. And I'm very excited about the car, but before it gets here, I wanted to make a video talking through how I specified the car and some initial content ideas I have for it when it arrives. You're joining me here in my 23 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing for this, and I felt it was an appropriate setting given that about a year ago now, I was in the same exact parking lot behind the wheel of my 80 series Land Cruiser that time, talking you through how I was building this car. So now we're here, I'm in this car, you're getting to look at it and we're passing the buck along. We're gonna talk through the Demon 170. Now what's different up front about the Demon 170 is that there are many fewer options for that vehicle than compared to the Blackwing. And so this is gonna be a bit more streamlined, but let's just dive right in. Here on the Dodge Garage site, is where you can configure the Demon 170. But before I do that, I'll just mention that if you would like to watch my video appeal that I sent to Dodge Corporate begging for allocation of one of the 3300 Demon 170s that they're going to produce, then stick around to the end of this video because I threw it in after the credits and you'll be the first to see that. I haven't published it anywhere else. So hopefully you get a kick out of that. I'm getting a kick out of watching a 170 pop a wheelie down the track strip getting me all kinds of excited for my car to get here. And I mean, just look at these figures, 1,025 horsepower, my first thousand horsepower car. And I didn't think in a million years that the vehicle that would at the very least immediately following the 668 horsepower Blackwing make another 357 horsepower beyond that. It's crazy. 945 pound-feet of torque, also ludicrous. And both of these are unlocked with the E85 fuel that the Demon is tuned to run on. 1.66 seconds to 60. I can't even imagine that. It's the world's quickest production car with that figure. Big disclaimer for this, for the over two Gs of acceleration force and the under nine second quarter mile, another one that I just can't even fathom. Big disclaimer is that all of those are only achievable on a prepped drag surface and for the vast majority of content that I'll be making on the Demon 170 on the real road, I'm not gonna see anything like that. Still just amazing that it's, it's possible. Down here, standard features, won't go through the whole list, but I'll let you peruse at your leisure. Some biggies, the Demon logo has changed. It's got yellow eyes now, just hinting at the corn burning fuel, E85. Uh, that the Demon 170 runs on. 170 is for its neck tattoo, otherwise it's the regular Demon logo. The three liter supercharger is an upgrade over the 2.7 liter unit in the Hellcat Red Eye. Still have the 6.2 V8. The Transbrake 2.0 system, the unsung hero of the crazy launch capabilities of this car. Rear axle ratio 3.09. Drag suspension system is bespoke to the 170. Two different wheel options that I'll get into a bit later. Mickey Thompson drag radials. These are somehow street legal um, and they're also a key player in it achieving its crazy performance potential. The air grabber hood is just like the regular Demon. Unlike the regular Demon, you don't get both the front and rear fender flares, just the rear ones. And that's, that's a key visual distinction between the cars. You get some carbon fiber, which is great. Some suede wrapping on the steering wheel, also nice. And you get a single cloth seat as standard, just one cloth seat. If you would like to have your car spec that way for ultimate weight savings, I won't be doing that. You also get a two speaker audio system. Speaking of saving weight, two whole speakers. My goodness. Colors. This is big for the Demon 170. There's so few options on this car, so few ways to, to customize it, that the color really says a lot about the car. And so I spent a long time online and even in person looking at Hellcats in these different colors and trying to visualize it in my garage alongside my electric blue Blackwing. And because my Blackwing is blue, I thought, well, maybe I should just get the Demon in blue. So I looked at the Frostbite and I looked at the B5 blue, but neither is really close to the same shade and neither it just kind of excited me the same way the Black Wings blue does. I thought two different shades, two different hues, blue, blue Huey, would be kind of weird. So I said no to blue. F8 green. I like me some green cars, uh, but it has to work for the car. Right now I'm reviewing a Bentley Flying Spur Speed in green and it is amazing. This green on this car, this body doesn't, doesn't work as well for me. Um, cinnamon stick, 
is a total this is probably the to me the the worst color for this car. Uh Go Mango and Sublime, they hurt my eyes a little bit. No hate on anyone who chooses a demon in this color or this color, but it just to me it, it hurts. Tor Red. I don't like the Charger Challenger in the bright red. I don't know why. They just they don't work for me. Octane Red is pretty interesting. I had a Hellcat with a manual and a saddle brown interior in this color combo. And I think that saddle brown contrast really sold me on the color. But because you can't get saddle brown for the interior, getting this in black or even in the bright red didn't work as well. White knuckle, no. Um, triple nickel, uh, silver works for some cars because it accentuates the body lines. This is not one of those cars. Like I had a silver E36 M3 and that was that was just right. Not, not for the demon. Uh, the two grays. Destroyer Gray I had on a scat pack that I reviewed some years ago, and it was kind of right around when this milky gray color was emerging as a trend, and so I was into it at that point. Now I've seen so many cars in this similar color that it's killed some of the allure for me. Same thing with Granite, same deal. Pitch Black, that was one of the two that I narrowed it down to, and this is like the Vader spec. I really loved that about it, that idea of kind of like flying under the radar, but then maybe having the red leather interior as a cool contrast. But ultimately, I just, I came back to my love of cars in fun colors, but the right fun color for the right car. Plum Crazy Purple is a historic color for the Challenger, and so it has some notoriety for that reason, but it also just suited the car for me. And I thought it would make a really nice contrast to the blue of my Blackwing parked in the garage. So I, I settled on Plum Crazy Purple. I'm ready for the hate comments right now. Unleash them, go ahead. And uh, the satin black that you could have on the hood, which is like a matte finish for the hood, for the roof, and for the deck lid. The three together, I don't know why it looked too stripey to me and I wasn't into it nearly as much as I was just for the hood because it really highlights the air grabber wide inlet. And so I just went with satin matte on the, on the hood. I mentioned that you can get the interior with just one cloth seat. And the idea there is to save weight. But for me, I'm not going to try to mimic the crazy same zero to 60, the same a quarter mile time as a professional got in this car. So adding a little bit of weight to be able to bring a passenger with me, uh, actually bringing more than just one passenger, I'd, I'd like to bring my wife and my kids with me. So I added in the front passenger seat and the rear bench, that was worth it to me. And also instead of just going with the cloth interior, which comes with so few things, I decided to add a little bit more weight and get the premium interior group. And that gives you Laguna leather and Alcantara inserts. You get heating and ventilation for the front seats, heated steering wheel. I don't care about the power tilt and telescoping wheel. In fact, I prefer manual adjustments. Uh, suede wrapped headliner, that's very nice. The premium stitched dash panel and the suede door trim. Those go a fair distance to help this interior not feel so much like the $30,000 Challenger cabin that it's based on. 18 speaker Harman Garden sound system. I don't love Harman Garden, but it's a whole lot better than a two speaker whatever sound system. Um, you get auto high beams, that's nice. Blind spot monitoring, that's really pretty essential there. And the trunk dress kit, that, that comes as standard as part of this package. I also went with the black interior because while the red is really fun and exciting, um, the red and the purple together was overdone for me. I, I couldn't really visualize the two gelling very well. I know a person who did this spec, and again, zero judgment on him for doing that. But uh, for me, this was it was a little too much. I wasn't opposed to red. I was opposed to it in this degree. So instead, I went with the black leather, but I did get the demonic red seat belt. So I've got to have red seat belts in the black wing and red seat belts in this car. The red is a nice contrast to the black, more subdued than the full red interior, and it picks up nicely with the red gauges as well. So that's how we did it. Didn't get the GPS navigation. You've got Apple CarPlay for that. Um, the trunk dress kit, as I mentioned, is part of the premium group. The power sunroof, I don't care about sunroofs enough to spend 10 grand on it. And I also don't need uh, weight to be added that high above, above the belt line. Um, the two different wheel options, 
This is probably the, the other biggest like modification or customization that you can make to the car. So it's the exterior color and it's the wheels. So Dodge was all excited that they have these carbon fiber wheels offered for the car. And the real benefit to these is that it can increase the rotational speed of the tires. And so that's kind of how you get the launch quite as nuts as it is. Unsprung weight, reducing that unsprung weight is, is key for, for performance vehicles. But for me, saving unsprung weight with a, a handling vehicle, like for example, the, the Corvette Z06 is offered in carbon fiber wheels. That is more of benefit to me than for a straight line car like this. And so when they were asking for just under $11,500 for just the wheels, um, when you get the same size wheel with a forged aluminum, um, and me just thinking through how much of a headache I might have if I take this into a tire shop and either they say, no, we're not even gonna do this, we're not gonna swap tires for you, or um, they do and they damage the wheel. I decided to just completely avoid that potential headache and said no to the carbon fiber. Once again, in addition to the purple color, I fully expect some people to go like, oh, you didn't get the full demon then because you didn't get the carbon fiber. Okay, guys, for one, it's an aluminum hub. So it's actually just the spokes and the dish that are carbon fiber. And two, $11,500, okay? If you've got the money to just throw on carbon fiber wheels for that, God bless you. Okay, and so that's my full spec of the car. And I'll show you here the price breakdown, but it comes down to just under $109,000 as equipped, which is yeah, about eight or nine grand more than the starting price for the car. Computer's about to run out of battery here. Um, and so that to me was keeping the vehicle within a sane price territory for all of the stock performance that you're getting from this vehicle and the distinction of this being the very last of the challengers and the very best, the very most insane of the challengers ever created. Now, as was the case with when I made the video sharing how I was specking this Blackwing, which I then later modified before it was actually built, I fully expect some of you to be completely disappointed or even insulted by how I've specced my Demon 170. But hopefully others of you are just as excited about the purple on the black interior with the red belts and can understand why I didn't spend almost 12 grand on carbon fiber wheels. But wherever you fall on that spectrum, more than anything, I just want you to be looking forward to the content that I have planned for that car. And I am gonna tease that out in just a sec. But first, let me just thank you guys for supporting me and encouraging me in the comments and with your views of this channel for all these years through the content I've made with the Blackwing and the Driven Diaries podcast and all of that stuff that I've got going on. Just, just seriously, sincerely, thank you for all that. And beyond all that, I want to definitely credit God for how he has blessed me in what I do. He is the source of my joy and he just is my constant encourager in all the ups and downs with creating content. So, I mean, my number one thank you is to him. Now, what do I have planned for the Demon 170? Well, so first I've already mentioned the Driven Diaries stuff. I want the Demon 170 to be another option for my guests of that show, whether they can't drive a manual and so therefore the Blackwing is out for them, or whether they like the Demon 170 and it's more focus on straight line speed than the Blackwing's focus on handling and dynamics. I wanna give them that option. So it will be in the mix and I'll let my guests decide before each episode which one they want to drive. I also plan on doing similar things as I did with the Blackwing in terms of ownership impressions, how it's like to daily drive that car, what it's like maybe to take it to a drag strip and see how it does what it's intended to do. Um, following the loves and loathes about the car after having spent some time behind the wheel, I plan on all of that in addition to some more comparisons videos. And I've been so excited about those and you guys seem to as well. So like I've done some comparisons with the Blackwing and some logical and sometimes illogical competitors, I wanna do some comparisons with the Demon 170 uh, vehicles that could closely align with it. And then some others that just seem kind of far-fetched but would just be fun to see as comparisons. So all that is coming to the channel and right now, Dodge is saying I should get the car around September, October. 
but GM promised I would have this one in October and I didn't get it till December of this past year. So I'm not placing all my bets on that deadline. I will keep you guys posted as I learn more. And of course, when the car gets here, I'll start making that content for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as usual, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you don't miss anything. And I will see you again next time. We got to start it up, right? That doesn't get old, and that's why I'm not selling this car. That, that's a lot of fan right there. Hello, Mopar overlords. This is an impassioned appeal for allocation of one of the Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170 vehicles. The Scat Pack wide body is just to kind of set the mood. I'm gonna break this into three parts. One, a little about myself. Two, why this car? And three, why me? Starting with that quick introduction, I have loved cars from a young age, and in particular, American-made vehicles. I'm fortunate now to have been in the auto industry for about 15 years, starting as a script writer for an auto news show called Fast Lane Daily, and then moving into freelance journalism for both Buff Books and lifestyle outlets. And more recently, I have become a YouTuber, which is Still uncomfortable for me to say, but it's my career. Uh, when I started the channel, I wanted it to be about cars and not about me, which is why I remained behind the camera for most of my content. First, I was filming walkarounds where SRT and performance Dodge models consistently scored big view numbers. And later, I moved into POV drives or point of view drives, where I once again was seeing Mopar vehicles hitting huge numbers and tapping an enthusiastic automotive community. Now, why this car? When the original Demon first came out, I was just getting started on my YouTube adventure, and though I desperately wanted to buy one, I just wasn't in a position to afford one, and I didn't, at the time, know just how well SRT content would resonate with my audience. Years later, I've found incredible success on a variety of social platforms, which has enabled me to purchase something special. Now, I don't expect this to help my case to mention a competitor, but hopefully the sentiment will be clear. I wanted something American, powered by a V8, rear wheel drive, and equipped with a manual gearbox. My wife, who is also involved in the car world, made one other stipulation. It needed four doors to accommodate our two young kids. A Charger Scat Pack or Hellcat was high in the list, but at the time it couldn't be had with a manual, and that led me to the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. Now, as an owner, I am fully addicted to V8 muscle, and I want to have the best two-car garage for a fan like myself. With the Demon 170 now touting the biggest power, the quickest zero to 60, the fastest quarter mile of any muscle car to date, and with it marking the end of V8 powered Dodges, I could not make the claim without this car. With the EV future upon us, this opportunity will not come again. And now why me? As I mentioned, Mopar content has performed exceptionally well on my platforms. And in fact, I have seven of these videos in the millions of views and all others deep into the hundreds of thousands. Bringing home a Demon 170 would solidify my commitment to not just muscle, but to Mopar. And the content that would come from ownership would be both extensive and well viewed. The Demon would be central to numerous video impressions, video podcasts, and even car shows. A car in my hands is an outreach to every one of my followers who watch my big kid energy with enthusiasm. I hope my excitement for the Demon 170 is clear, and I hope you'll let me share that with my viewers for years to come.